we can just print desk lamps now. It feels sci-fi, but I promise it's not a movie trick. We're living in that time right now. This lamp looks like it has floating discs and it's Bluetooth. Okay, the floating is an honest illusion. Curious how it worked? I'll show the fails that got me here, the fix that finally worked, and share those STLs with their exact print settings and wiring diagram so that you could build this yourself. Let's jump in. This video proudly sponsored by PCBWay. Now, no one likes when their plans don't work out, but honestly, that's the design process. Design, build, test, fail, repeat, until it no longer fails. Then be overjoyed with the bliss of it finally working. My lamp had three rounds of failure before I decided doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results is crazy. Three magnet designs, a small magnet embedded into the discs, a larger round magnet embedded into the discs, and finally, a very powerful N52 rectangular magnet glued to the inside of the discs. All of these failed, so I pivoted to a static spacer. The issue with static spacers in this lamp is that they will block the light from the diffuser in the center. To keep the illusion of floating discs, I needed a clear spacer, the same pet G as the diffuser, so that they will be practically invisible. Now, the lamp is Bluetooth controlled, so an RGBW controller needed a hiding spot for that seamless look. I carved out a space in the base for the controller, as well as a remote, in case your phone is out of reach. I sometimes lose mine. The lamp's heart is an LED wrapped tube. It threads together quickly and then sits inside of a tall octagon made from that diffused PET G, which centers a whole stack of discs. Every assembly is intentional. Each piece works with the others. The geometry breaks a single light source into clean slits for that modern aesthetic. Are you curious how close I got the lamp to the design? Well, let's validate some points. The first check is repeatability in the disc gap. If they are not perfectly spaced, the whole geometric look is trash. I was aiming for five millimeters and a quick caliper check confirms that these specifications are within specification. Once the spacing is confirmed, we need to check the spacers for functionality. Do we see any remnants from the printed support? Does it affect the lighting or is it functionally invisible? Upon inspection, if you are really looking at it, you can see the supports, but from across the room, it is unnoticeable. We now need to check its stability. Tables and desks can be bumped and if the lamp constantly falls over, it's not much of a lamp. It's more of a liability. To test this, I will actively try to tip the lamp and see if it falls over or returns to its normal normal upright position. Fun fact, if you design in CAD, you can see the center of mass. In this case, the lower it is, the better, but only if your material properties are set correctly. Garbage in, garbage out is the general rule with CAD. With it confirmed stable, how does it actually perform as a lamp? Is the light even, properly diffused, are there hot spots? A quick walk around in a dark area confirms the lamp is indeed properly diffused. We will also check it from 25% to 100% brightness to confirm it holds true at all levels and move on. Next up, a stress test. We need to confirm that it stays cool enough as the construction is LED strips wrapped around a central pole that is then enclosed in a diffused shell. This will inevitably trap heat. To confirm the stability, a 30 minute heat soak will be run to see how hot the lamp gets and to make sure the material chosen are up to the task. As suspected, the lamp did get warmer, but not to the point of failure or need of redesign. Now, some of my past speakers were not so buildable. They were hard to recreate with tight tolerance and fussy parts to name a few issues. This one is doable though. Discs and spacer collars stack like Lego. And the only tricky bit is a tiny, tiny bit of soldering. While the wiring diagram's on screen, check if you're subscribed. If not, hit subscribe, tick the bell so you don't miss the next build. Now, the controller uses screw terminals, a small flat screwdriver to be pre precise, and the LED strips are peel and stick, and the center post threads together. The hardware is five M3 heat sets into the bottom cover, two for the controller mount, and that makes for a total of seven M3 by eight millimeter hardware needed. Lastly, cost. I will break down my cost so that you can weigh this into your decision if you want to build this. Now, on screen is what a reasonable person could expect to spend for each component to buy this online. You can find them cheaper if you buy in bulk, like I did. 
So overall, we're looking at $117, which seems like a whole lot in this context. For this project though, I only had to purchase the LED strips for $24 and the controller for $23. You could even go cheaper by skipping the remote as well, as I think that was an $8 add-on. And I would rate the project complexity at a 3 out of 10, with 10 being building a rocket ship and 1 being a two-piece puzzle. Now you may be wondering, what if I don't have a printer? Well, my good friends over at PCBWay can help. They offer 3D printing in all manners of mediums, from SLA nylon, traditional FDM, or even exotic SLS metal printing. And they don't just stop at printing either. They offer full PCB manufacture and assembly, which they are offering a free purple mask on until October 31st. They also offer custom CNC work, for all your DIY and maker needs. Check them out at the link in the description below and see all that they have to offer. And don't forget to buy through that link below as well as it directly helps the channel. So the specs are all hit. It's invisible, it's stable, and it stays cool. So let's button it up and enjoy the glow. Disc spacer, disc spacer, it really was that simple. And with a five millimeter printed gauge, then tidy the wiring and this project's complete, and it really does give a nice even light and stays uniform from 25 to 100% brightness. And since it passed the bump test, it is now ready to make its debut. Now I wish the magnets would have worked, but I'm not mad at the simplicity of the static mount. Like I said, I wanted it simple for you, the viewer, to recreate. All the STLs, my exact print settings, and the wiring PDF are linked below, and the build of materials will be at that. Now, like everything, this can be made better. I might look into redesigning it, if there's enough support. Changing the shape, trying a smoke diffuser to tone the light down, which version 2 would you pick? A smoke diffuser? Maybe a touch dimmer? Uh, drop in the comments your ideas and we'll see where we go. Now if this was helpful, consider subscribing. And if you missed it last time, the 50 speaker dome is on the channel now. Check it out. Thanks for watching.